it's a Leon, my brain is not. <laughs> We're in a new conference room, and it just seems weird to me. I think we need to rearrange the seating so that Leo it's change like, oh, is okay. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> I just appreciate that Leo is like you're. See, you're smiling. You're, 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 he hasn't seen us for two weeks. That's right. Give him a few hours. Give him a few hours. <laughs> that smile is gonna be. That post vacation hue will be gone, and it'll be back to really <laughs> world open. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. Oh. Yes! I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard. I did not do that. Now, here's Jason. Very bright. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Uh, this is not a rerun, I promise. This is not pre-taped. We are live again. We're so we're so glad glad to be back with you. Uh, I've been gone for a couple weeks, and I didn't post a lot on social media uh, because, as you know, and it, usually when I do the monologue here, uh, we do some jokes or whatever. But uh, today, I, I, I just want to implore you. Uh, as, as a lot of you know, if you've been with me for a while, uh, Hawaii is a, is a special place for me and my family. We've gone there for uh, about ten years and uh, specifically the island of Oahu. Uh, but as you know, uh, Maui has been in the news lately. Uh, we were in Hawaii, we were on Oahu for a portion of our, our vacation. And uh, I spent a lot of time uh, talking to residents. Um, I always try to be a respectful tourist. Um, uh, bluntly, I see a lot of folks there that are just knuckleheads and they treat the islands uh, like their personal playground. Uh, we make it a habit of not doing that and being respectful to not only the island, but the people that live there. We are guests. Anyway, I, I tell you all this because I spent a good deal of time talking to, I, I've made friends, you know, one of the great joys of vacations, I think everyone can agree, is, you know, meeting new friends. And, and Colin and I have done that over the last decade. And, uh, and, and I spent time talking to the residents and, and, and hearing their stories of, of relatives of theirs on, uh, uh, on Maui and what they've had to go through, what they're going to continue to go through, the basic needs that, that they have. Uh, people need literally the basics. Uh, water, underwear, diapers. So uh, I just wanted to spend uh, just this 30 seconds at the top of the show. Hawaii has given so much to me um, and my family that the least I could do with a platform like this, our little goofy show that's only here to make you laugh, is to spend a few seconds to, to ask you a little favor. If you can donate to diaper banks, the Maui Diaper Bank, or donate to the Maui Humane Society. They're looking for pets. That's a whole other story. Whatever you can donate to to help these uh, the good folks of Hawaii, they're going to need it. It's going to be a long, long process. But I'll tell you what, and I'll end with this. Uh, what I also learned... What I also was reminded of, you talk about perseverance, you talk about uh, spirited people, it's the people of Hawaii. They're gonna rebuild. They're, they are gonna rebuild. They really are. So thank you in advance. Now, let's start the show. Roll it, Leo. Here we go, everybody. I have certainly missed this lady. Please say hello to Kendall, everybody. Hi. How you doing, love? Hi. How you doing? Do you want to touch? I know. We're back. Hi. I know. I missed you. I, I missed you, too. You're so tan. I told you not to get so tan. I know. Kendall yelled at me. She was, please don't get tan. And I, 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 and I couldn't help it. I was in, uh, I was in Vegas. I was in LA for a little time, sending some warm thoughts to my one of my BFFs, uh, Haley. Uh, and then again, like I said, we were in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I do, I told the studio audience, I feel like a little bit of a hash brown that's been left in the <laughs> toaster like a, a little brown. too long. 
darling. That's all right. But well, I missed you. I'm just you. pale and pregnant, so hey. It, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, and we're back. We have three shows here, and then we're out at the State Fair, the Minnesota State Fair. Yeah. So come see us. So come see us at the fair. You don't need a ticket uh, to see us. You do need a ticket to the fair. I always say every year, thank you, audience, don't show up at the fair and go, Jason told me I didn't need a ticket. <laughs> you don't need a ticket to our show. Uh, but come see us. We're live each weekday except for uh, Labor Day. Okay, one more item on the list. I have so much to tell you. i I got to tell you about a shark dive. I'll tell you about that tomorrow. Anyway. Who are you? I believe me. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, one more piece of business before we get to the hot dish, and that's this. Uh, remember our friend Madeline Smithberg. I've been talking about her for months and months and months. Madeline became a good friend of ours. Um, she was a, a, a co-creator of The Daily Show. Uh, she also was David Letterman's um, kind of uh, regular people segment producer on, in, on the late night show on NBC. She's become a good friend of ours over the last few seasons. Madeline has been very open about her battle with uh, breast cancer. And we thought it would be great because we know how caring all of you are. Madeline has given us so much. We thought it would be great to send her cards. And boy, did you. We received, I think, like a thousand cards. Mm -hmm. Well, she received our box and she had no idea what was in this box. I lied to her. I told her it was something funny, so I wanted her to roll on it. She did. Here's a little bit of her real reaction. All right, Jason, I'm really intrigued. This giant box has just arrived. It's really heavy, even though it says it's small. Uh, all right, what could it be? Coming to me from my favorite person in Minnesota. Jason, what is this? I'm a little nervous, I'm a little scared. What the heck? Oh my God. Your family at our show and our audience thought you could use some love. Jason. Wow. You guys! What the hell? You don't know? <laughs> no! Come on! What the f What? Sorry, Jess, not there anymore. Oh my God, you guys! This is the nicest thing! Mm. I don't even know what to say. I love you guys so much. I'll be back really, really, really soon. Really? I don't have to read all these. I don't have to answer them all, do I? <laughs> 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 we got it. <a> yeah. <laughs> no, sweetheart, you don't have to answer them all. No. I love you, Madeline. We can't wait to see you back. And thanks to all of you. I knew you guys were good. I knew you were, and I appreciate it. Let's get started. Roll the hot dish. Here we go, Leo. Let's do this. <laughs> it's time for the hot dish. Barbie's reign at the top of the box office is over this morning. The new movie, I know. Well, I had a good run. It's, it's all, it's, believe me, Barbie made like four billion dollars. She's good. Yeah. The new movie, uh, Blue Beetle, opens in first place. But as the summer comes to a close, the real talk is about two box office flops. A new report from Variety says both Indiana Jones 5 and Mission Impossible 7 are on track to each lose $100 million. That's despite Mission Impossible earning more than a half a billion dollars worldwide and Indiana Jones earning nearly $400 million. Variety says both movies cost a lot to make and promote. That's what has to change at this point. I was reading an article on the on the flight home, and it, it, they were talking specifically about Transformers, or the Transformers movie. Mm -hmm. They said they, they got to figure out a way to do these movies a little cheaper so that they can become profitable. Because did you hear what I said? Indiana Jones still made four hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. What what crazy universe is a movie not profitable still making that much money? It's insane. It's I don't crazy. understand. I don't understand either. I truly don't. I'm like, where does that money? Who's getting paid? They got to bring the budgets down. And you know what I mean? They don't have to sacrifice quality. They can figure out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. There's been, you know, we were talking about Dirty Dancing in our movie, in our in our meeting. Dirty Dancing in 86, we're going to have a story coming up a little bit later about it. Mm -hmm. The movie cost like $17 to make, you know, and, and, and it made, Actually, it made, you know, hundreds of millions. Million. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Next in the dish, it could be the moment some boy band fans have been waiting more than two decades for. New reports say NSYNC is reuniting for a new song. Song. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, 
<laughs> and it's all thanks to Justin Timberlake's new movie, look. Branch, we're out of sync. We've gone from boys to men, and now there's only one direction for us to go. The back streets. Branch, it's time we find the rest of our brothers and get the band back together. Rosa! We're gonna have the best family reunion ever. Brozone 2.0. Brozone reunion. Brozone, here we bro again. Brozone, where'd they bro? I don't know. We're gonna find them! That's the trailer for the upcoming, yeah. That's the trailer for the upcoming Trolls sequel called Trolls Band Together in the movie. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Uh, in the movie, Timberlake's character reunites with his old boy band. Entertainment Tonight says NSYNC is working on a new song for the movie soundtrack. It would be their first new music since Kendall was two years old. No, I'm just joking. No, since 2001. Uh, how old were you then? Eleven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was in my first year of working at the station. Oh, God. Oh. So I was sorry. already contributing to my 401k. <laughs> and you were eating special K. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Trolls Band Together comes out in November. I'm excited. I, whatever generates new NSYNC, I'm for. I'm not going to see that crappy movie, but I'm going to watch, you know. I, yeah. Well, I think a lot of the people who are going to bring their kids to that movie are going to be between my age and your age, and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's NSYNC, and we'll have something to look forward to. Yeah, because you're right. Your generation, you're just now having kids. Right. And, and my generation, our kids are putting us in retirement communities. Yeah. That's right, yes. Lots more to come, but first, be sure to sign up, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, to be part of our studio audience in September. We'll be back after the State Fair starting Tuesday, September 5th. The next week is our ninth season premiere. Head to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show. And as we go to break, I love doing this. It's our audience shots from earlier this month. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. in the studio we, we leave for two weeks it is I, I just the audience and I uh, I'm oh, taking them for margaritas after the show it is like lucky you oh my god it is boiling it is really hot in here so I told the audience I'm sorry I'm gonna look like an old southern woman for like an hour <laughs> Uh, no, I mentioned this a little bit ago, uh, and I'll just tell you quickly. I, I have some primal fears, and maybe you have the same fears. I have a fear. Don't laugh. We'll just wait. Dark water? I have a fear of dark water. I have a fear of heights, and I have a fear of sharks. And, uh, and I'm sitting at, at one of our favorite places, the Royal Hawaiian, uh, where we go. And one of, the, one of the, the, our friends now, his name's Nick. We call him little Tarzan, because he's like I'm that sorry? big. He, yeah, he's like, we, he's like 23, okay. he's physical, he's everything I'm not. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> like, and he has a little bun, he has long hair, he looks like a little Tarzan, and okay. he does all sorts of athletic stuff. The first day we got there, I sat at the bar, and I go, hello, Nick, I love you, miss you, Glad, good to see you. And he goes, happy birthday, Jason. And I said, thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. And he goes, um, I know what I'm going to get you for your birthday. And I said, what are you going to get me, Nick? And he goes, and mind you, this is Friday. And he goes, well, Wednesday's my day off, and I'm going to take you uh, Wednesday to the North Shore where you will go shark diving with me. Hey! Does he know you? So he, then he proceeded, and I thought about it for two seconds. I said, oh, I said, I've always wanted to conquer my fear. And I said, maybe I would do this, you know? What? No, hold on a minute. And he said to me, then he, then he dropped this bombshell on me. He goes, oh, by the way, it's without a cage. It's free, it's free diving. It's free diving with a shark. And free then he, diving? It's free diving, and this is what, yeah. And he said to me, oh, don't worry about it. I'll be in the water with you. And the shark, the tiger shark that you'll probably encounter is one that usually swims around there named Roxy. And I thought, and then, and then Roxy has a dental problem. That's how they identify her. She has like a little crooked mouth. And I'm like, I don't care what kind of condition her mouth is in. I don't want the mouth on me. And I said, uh -huh. I, I said, no, I, I'm not doing this without a cage. So I politely declined. And I said, look, next year, 
get me a cage and maybe a little bitty nurse shark or something, and then uh -huh. I'll consider it. But Roxy, are you ready for this? No. Roxy is 16 feet long. Yeah. No. Roxanne. I said absolutely not. So I am here. I'm alive. Hashtag Jace don't pay for danger. You know what I mean? I'm not. No, I don't know. No. Yeah, look how oh my God! Is TMZ lot. ready to go? No, keep, keep going. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Get ready to feel old. 36 years ago today, one of the biggest movies of the 80s. I mentioned this a little bit ago. Opened at the box office. Which one? This one. Dirty Dancing was a surprise hit of 1987, uh, earning more than $200 million worldwide. It was also the first movie to sell more than a million copies on home video. Can you believe that? I remember all of us of my age, you remember buying that VHS tape. Mm -hmm. Oh, that movie, it was that summer I was in junior high. It was the Dude. thing. I mean, it was, it, you, there's, it's hard to, well, a Barbie, actually. This is a good summer. That's a good comparison. It was a phenomenon. Mm. A phenomenon. I love that movie. Yeah. Nobody puts baby in the corner. No. <laughs> but I did make out with a girl to the soundtrack. I did, yeah. yeah. I want you to all put that together. That's right. Just put that in your That's brain. right. I did. I had a, a girl. Ha I had a girl. Sense. I know. Half the, the, the pe new people watching our show is like, what? Yeah, I know. I had a girlfriend, but uh -huh. Uh -huh, to, the, to the soundtrack of More Dirty Dancing. Mm. It was the, more Dirty yeah, Dancing. The soundtrack was so popular, they had it a second edition with no, more songs. More Dirty songs? More, no, I mean, it was like more classic songs. Oh. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when work. I had a waterbed. That's right. We yeah. should work on that. <laughs> but he made out with a girl on. Uh, I'll tell the audience the rest of that story in the break. But anyway, more dish for you now. Uh, there are two people I try to avoid. Uh, they are the two people I try to avoid at all costs. But a new show on Max features one of our regular contributors, that's why we're doing this story, who offers his take on one of the most talked about divorces in recent memory. Look. It was the biggest news story on the planet. There was so much at stake in this case billion dollar companies, properties all over the country, and four children. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, they are our royal family. The stated reason for the divorce was irreconcilable differences. What we really learned in this case was this was a toxic relationship. What does it tell about his character to fight for his marriage? She had to walk through the fire so that she could be free. Kanye may be a rich and powerful artist, but he's never dealt with something as powerful as the Kardashian legal machine. Kim versus Kanye, the divorce, uh, takes a look at the high profile breakup of the former power couple with insight from our very own Dax Holt. You saw him right there, host of the uber popular Hollywood Raw podcast. If you so choose to watch it, it's streaming right now on Max. Mm -hmm. I would rather put out a campfire with my face. Uh, oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that bad. No, I'm not. What, Go ahead. For the team, you watch it for us. I'm not, Thank you know. You. I watched like 10 minutes of it. It was very entertaining. Great. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. I didn't like them married. Uh -huh. I didn't like them uh, separate. And I sure don't like them divorced. I, 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 you know what I mean? Can't you hate watch it? I, no, I'm not going to hate watch it. Uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of shows I can hate watch. Hey! You know, that's, yeah. The View is one of them. <laughs> yeah. But you're they not go up against us. Yeah. They go up against us. They're not watching it anyway. They're not watching anyway, yeah. Wow, we have View fans in the studio audience today. <laughs>
<laughs> Next up, she's the former Real Housewife at the center of one of the most talked about moments in the franchise history. I'm talking about former New York Housewife <laughs> Kelly Ben Simone. Oh, this is Scary Island. This is the Scary Island episode. Anyway, that's Kelly Ben Simone who famously clashed with uh, the cast in season three of New York during a trip to St. John that became known as Scary Island. Well, now Kelly, there's Sonia right there. Now Kelly is speaking out about. Re Hi, Alex. About returning to the franchise for the upcoming Ultimate Girls Trip, Roni Legacy. Kelly will reunite with Ramona, Sonia, Countess Luann, Dorinda, and Kristen on the new show where they go on vacation once again. Kelly says this trip is much different because the women are older with new things happening in their lives. The show's going to premiere on Peacock later this year. You have heard me, and I don't want, if, you, if you're not in the Housewives uh, universe, but you've heard me reference it. If you have friends that watch Housewives, mm -hmm. you know. I consider those two episodes of The Real Housewives of New York, the scary, some of the best reality television ever. Because Kelly goes, I, I mean, just, we are still not sure what happens to Kelly. No. Um, and it's, there's so many great lines that have come from that, mm -hmm. um, like Satchels of gold. Satchels of gold. Like, all of a sudden, audience, Kelly, Ben Simone, it was a non sequitur, she just goes, Satchels of gold! And we're like, why are you saying that? And then she goes, Al Sharpton! And you don't know why <laughs> she's saying that. So, uh, it, so anytime Kendall and I feel in trouble, we just go, satchels of gold, satchels of gold. Uh, you can watch it on uh, Peacock coming up uh, later this fall. Next up, an update on a story we talked about in the hot dish just a few days before we went on vacation. Back then, we said that Gal Gadot was picking up her lasso of truth for a third Wonder Woman movie. But last week, Variety said there are no plans to make that third movie. Instead, the new heads of the DC Universe are focusing on a new Superman movie a Batman and Robin movie, and a Wonder Woman prequel with a series, not a movie, a series, without Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Very, he said, she said. Yeah. Like, because she was like, and I quote, that's what she kept saying, and I quote, they Gal told me said to be doing this. Yes. I don't know, again... I am really done with prequels, and I think audience, uh, audiences are too. We don't need prequels. We already know how the story ends. That's always the problem with the prequels. Give us another Wonder Woman with like an original story in the future. Uh, just and make it better than that awful Wonder Woman at 84. <laughs> Anything he that, loved that movie. I hated that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason I watched it and it, over was because it was in the pandemic and we had nothing else to do except <laughs> watch that and Tiger King and make sourdough bread. I know. That's all we could do. I mean. Sorry. That's, that's all we could do. This show actually looks good, though. So it, they said it's going to be like a Game of Thrones type show, which is vicious. Yeah, because of the Amazonians. Right, and it's all the women that ruled before Gal Gadot's character was even, Wonder Woman was even a thing. So that's why she's not in it. Have you ever seen any of the original Wonder Woman series on... With Linda Carter? With Linda Carter. A couple, a couple little things. Oh, it's so good. I loved her outfit. Yeah. With the little stars on her britches? Yeah. Yeah. And uh -huh. the, yeah. Uh -huh. I love those. Hair. I know. I had, I look, this is why, well, one of 18 reasons I was beat up in elementary school. But I, <laughs> I had Wonder Woman under ruse, and I, I thought it would be. <laughs> What's an underwear? <laughs> Thank God I'm married because I would never get a date again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's an underwear? What are underwears? Is it like underwear? <laughs> Okay. She was born in the 90s, yeah. <laughs> Underoos were fun underwear, like a top and a bottom. <laughs> Did they match? Fun, I mean, they were, they were kitty. Did they match? They match, and you could get... <laughs> Yes! I had Spider-Man and I had Wonder Woman. I can't and laugh this hard. I can't breathe. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, please don't go into labor right now. <laughs> it's too hot in here for that. <laughs> Are you okay? No, I can't breathe. My lungs are this big. <laughs> Is there a doctor in the house? Oh my god. Okay. We gotta take a break. We're gonna adjust the air conditioner, get her to a doctor, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Oh god. Coming up, two of our most popular guests together for the very first time. Stephanie Hansen and Leslie Miller are combining great salads and great wine when we return. Oh, 
Say the morning prayer, everyone. <laughs> Summer is the season for salads. You sing. Okay, Stephanie, you're doing it again. You're in the shot way before I introduce you. <laughs> Over here, over here. Over Salads here. using all the freshly grown vegetables that you can find. Hey, and hey, why not pair that salad with a delicious wine? Today, two of our most popular <laughs> contributors are coming together <laughs> for the very first time. Please welcome foodie queen Stephanie Hansen, host of Taste Buds on Fox Local, and wine expert Leslie Miller. <laughs> Vacation. We were lonely. I, I missed both of you independently, and I missed <laughs> both of you together. Me. Yeah. Uh, now, while I was gone, uh, you went ahead and got yourself your own show. I did. Yeah. It debuted. It debuted. I'll tell you, audience, Stephanie sent us a text, uh, like a group text uh, on the day it premiered. And uh, uh, Stephanie forgot that it's five hours behind in Hawaii. So she sent it at about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, so yes, yeah, anyway, congratulations, Thank love. You. Congratulations. I'm so excited. Leslie, when are you getting your own show? Yeah, yeah she's gonna right. be our next spin-off. That's right. These, you're looking at my Rachel Rays here. That's right, yeah. You're finding all this amazing talent um, in the marketplace. Uh, but go to Fox Local, download the app. It's really easy. Pick Minneapolis, and then you can see Taste Buds. I did check out the show. Uh, oh, fine. You did. It, it's gr I'm so darn proud of you. It's so fun. It's you cute. do such a good job. I'm so and excited. Yeah, I, it's great. <laughs> okay. I, uh, this is a coming together. I feel like this is the Avengers. Uh, yeah. Both oh, of you yeah. here. Yeah. Yes. So, what, so what are we doing? So what are we Wonder doing? Wonder Woman Part 3 that you wanted to yeah. see. So Leslie had the idea that we would come together with wine and summery salads because why not? Why not? Picnics. Yes, and wines that are easy, obviously, to find. Traditional wines, but also to put in a wine that's a little bit outside the box. Oh. Uh, to give you some ideation behind, like, hey, what, what can I actually pair to this that will make the perfect pairing? Well, and, and, and Stephanie, you're, you're, I mean, we have two segments, girl. You're already done with the salad. I mean, uh, what, I mean <laughs> could you slow down a little bit? You're done with the salad already. What is that? She's taking the chicken out of the oven in just I a minute. I can't stop laughing. No, I have a lot to talk about. So I'm well, here. you better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did you just do there? Okay, so I was in Italy for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And in Italy, there's the beautiful wines, but there's also all these wonderful tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking about what would be like a good salad that would pair with wine, I obviously was thinking tomatoes. Yeah. So panzanella salad is like a Tuscan rustic salad. It's great in the summertime because it uses all those fresh tomatoes, but it also uses stale bread. Now, I know that doesn't sound awesome, <laughs> but Way it's to sell very it, delicious. Stuff. Yeah, As you, the audience was stunned. But great, silent. stale bread. Yeah, yeah. No, the idea is, is that the bread soaks up all the juices of the tomato, of the vinaigrette, so it gets real juicy and saucy. And then the croutons kind of absorb and they get a little softer. And by the time you're done, it's just a super delicious, flavorful salad that goes perfect with wine, uses up a lot of the summer produce. It doesn't have mayonnaise or anything again, so you can keep it out on a picnic table or serve it with a piece of fish for dinner. It's awesome. So that's a little, and we're looking at basically just all the ingredients. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and here's a little hand and hack because okay. I always try to give you a little you know if you don't have stale bread which many of us don't um, you can use the par baked like baguettes or the ciabattas or the things that you buy already in the package because those are already baked and they're chewy and that's actually perfect for a panzanella salad. Okay. I toasted these just because I'm fancy, but I was doing it and I was like, why am I doing this? I could have used this bread right from the par-baked bag and it would have been just as good. Now are we going to pair that with something, Wine Diva? Yes. We are. We are. Should we start with the niswa? Sure. Okay. So niswa's is a French salad and it this? uses a niswa olive, yes. Now, they're kind of hard to find sometimes, so I just used a Kalmata, but you're gonna have a little olive, and then again, you're using all this farm fresh produce that's in season. So this is a vegan version, which has chickpeas, quinoa salad, potatoes, beans. These came from my garden, and the tomatoes, and the um, basil is the garnish. And you make like a light champagne-y vinaigrette. I use champagne so that Leslie can pair it with a wine because I thought, why not? Yeah. Champagne vinaigrette. 
So what are we going to pair this with? So this is light, it's fresh, and it's kind of crunchy. And so I always think about like high acid, but also like just some lovely white wines to kind of snuggle into the potatoes, the chickpeas, and also the green beans. Okay. Now, when I talk about, because we're going to move into the fish here, but when I talk about white wines, people are always like, oh, they're always crisp. They are generally lovely and yes, a little bit fresher than reds, but this is a a grape called Pinot Blanc. This would be something very, very easy for you to find. It's not Pinot Grigio. Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, one plant, whereas Pinot Blanc is right in the middle where it kind of goes with everything on the plate, including that little crunch to the green beans, but also, again, with the chickpeas and the potatoes. Are you okay over what do you this? Think? I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah. It's <laughs> this fair. is good. It's a little pear. <laughs> it's a little grapefruit. It's a little fresh, <clears throat> lemony garden smell. I really enjoy this. Yeah. This is real. This is. It's lovely. It's that's a great word. It yeah. is lovely. It uh, is out of uh, it is alcohol it feels out fancy. of the Willamette. It yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> it's it does. not that fancy. Willamette is uh, makes great wines. So, yeah. Leslie, I have found some of the best wines at your shop that I had no idea about the grapes. Yeah. She's the best. Yeah. Well, and Steph is the best too. They're sticking around. More salads <laughs> and wine pairings when we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> That's really good. Welcome back, everyone. Glad to be back. More with Stephanie Hansen and Wine Diva. Leslie Miller, we're pairing uh, great salads with great wine. What's the next salad, Stefaroo? Okay, the next salad is very similar. It just has a grilled tuna instead of the chickpeas and the couscous, the dressing's the same. So what I like about this is it's great for a party because you can serve the tuna on the side with the vegan accoutrement on the side and then everyone can kind of plate up based on their needs. This one has a hard boiled egg too, which is real traditional. Again, same type of vinaigrette. So what would you pair with that with the fish, Leslie? So two things that go on here. Fish oil, this is a really fun, speaking of hacks, these are really good tips to just kind of stick in your little wine basket. Um, what, fish oil and actually wines that have lived inside of a barrel do not pair together. It's sort of like oh. nails on a chalkboard. They just don't interact well. And no it Cabernet, feels no like, Chardonnay. Well, Cabernet also just overpowers this entire dish, but also Chardonnay that lived in a wood barrel, right? So you do like a stainless steel style. But, you know, I wanted to get a little bit more interesting here too. This, you know, when I think of like Italian, now obviously this is a French dish, but this is a really fun little white grape called Arnaise. And Arnaise is a great alternative for that in between. If you like the Pinot Blanc, which again is medium weighted, I always call the medium weighted section of, of wines, not light, not full, the Goldilocks of wines because they really kind of pair to everything. So this has a little bit more of that crunchy mm -hmm. minerality Heartier. to it. Yes. And then again, it kind of livens up. It has that fresh lemon side. Again, eggs and wine that are that lived inside of a, a wood barrel, an oak barrel, they don't match. They collide immediately. So you always want something that lived in a stainless steel barrel. No that's wood. A, see, it, even if we're not fancy like you two, that's, we can remember that. If yes. it, yeah, don't mix if don't it's lived in a barrel. Don't go with big oaky something. No. Yes. No oaky with fishy. That's right. There we go. <laughs> no that's, oaky with fishy. You all laugh, but that's how you will remember it. That's right. Okay, all now right. are we going back to this salad? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so this is the panzanella bread with the stale, I know, doesn't sound exciting salad. But with this one, you are from Tuscany, mm -hmm. so you've got a little more juice, juice, juice. We've got onions <laughs> in here. I just made a simple vinaigrette with, again, the champagne vinegar because I wanted to use that and show how you can highlight it in lots of different dishes. So while I toss this up, what do you have for us? So traditional here, we have tomatoes. Excuse me, stuff. There we go. <laughs> go tomatoes. Ahead. So tomatoes and Sangiovese, they're an iconic pairing. If you put these two together in textbooks, this is really, we always describe the grape, Sangiovese, as kind of having sort of like a tomato water, tomatoey sort of edge to it. This has to, this is one banger, you guys. This is one bang for your for your buck. It's under $15. Woo! 
Ooh, I we, like that. Like, all these wines are in that category. You know, I love the whole idea of finding, you know, all these great wines for, you know, $15 and under. And this is Carpazzo, uh, which I have to say, it lives, like, on tap at our house. Oh, <laughs> I like we things on tap. Love it. It's great for flatbreads and kind of all of the above. I, um, a one banger for $15. Uh -huh. I'm loving it. Yeah, that's right. Totally. Yes, Ooh, but look at that. Here is Leslie. the magic sauce. Here's the sauce, you She guys. knows what? I like sparkling wine, so tea. I know I'm in trouble. Okay. So this thing is going to. Do I have to put this one down, or no. can I just. Okay, I'll put that one down. Okay. <laughs> this thing is going to light your hair on fire. Oh, really? I yeah. like that. <laughs> this also. Okay, but just to. I want to be sure, mm -hmm. because I'm jet lagged. Uh, this also goes with this one? It does. Okay, yes. what is this now? So you know me. I love a good bub, and I love finding really fun unusual little things that will pair to again step outside the box you guys and also drink step are out you, are you gonna make it through this no i'm so happy <laughs> okay go ahead this is like my dream life right here <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Leslie. Drink everything. Like, yeah. try try on all the things, right? Like, if you want to do a beer to this or you want to do Cabernet Drink this, everything. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, you wow. know, I do love a good sparkling wine. And oh. sparkling will cut through the natural fats here. So a little bit of that olive oil. And this rosé will, like, just be BFFs with those tomatoes. And let me tell you, I cannot stop drinking this tea so. Oh, uh, I, I can't. I let me can't. tell you. I can't. I've uh, never uh, heard of that before either. That is really a great glass. Slap of wine. my button, call me Esther. This is good. <laughs> this is real good. <laughs> This is great. Okay, we're going to drink so this delicious. in the commercial break. Uh, now, if you want more, uh, head to Leslie's website, amusewine.com. And if you're in the Twin Cities or visiting us, check out her amazing store, Sit Better. For Stephanie, her website is stephaniesdish.com. And don't forget to watch her new show, Taste Buds, on the Fox Local app. We're going to take a break. We're not done with these two. We're going to make <laughs> them play a game after we've drank wine. After we drink. When, when we return. This is so good. It is not every day that we have two guest stars on the same show together. So in honor of that, we're putting them to the test. Roll it, Leo. It's game time. Here we go. Well, uh, today's game takes us... <laughs> Today's so game excited. takes us back to the 80s when odds are both Stephanie and Leslie were rocking leg warmers and crimped hair. And underoos. And underoos. That's right. <laughs> it's time to play Name That 80s Song. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to play, uh, I'll play you a list of songs from female singers of the 80s and ring in when you know the answer. You got it? You're going to hear. It's an audio clue. Okay. okay? Are you ready? Hands above buzzers. I'm Stephanie. ready. And I love that uh, Leslie brought her wine out here. I mean, yeah, I love it. <laughs> she can't drop the wine. Okay, here we go. Director Leo, roll the first audio, please. Okay, wait, okay would you wait until I call on you? <laughs> oh, we're supposed to wait? Stephanie. Kim Carnes. No. Over to you, Leslie. We need the song or performer. Oh, um. Oh, my God. Whoa. No, I know. Oh, oh, my gosh. Okay, back over to back Stephanie. Over bright Eyes is the name of the song. No, no. Bright Eyes. What? Not. Turn around, Bright Eyes. No way. Turn around. No. Oh, oh, totally oh, clips of the heart. I can't hear all the words. We're okay. really bad. Words. Okay. Already. Leo, All right. give yeah. up. <laughs> give up. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Can we just do this the whole next show? Yeah. We'll start over. Here we go. Uh, Leo, roll the next song. Gloria. Okay, again, wait till I call on you. Oh, I'm sorry. I really, I'm bad at directions. Yeah, but it is Gloria by Laura Branigan. Oh, man. I love music games. I know. No, we couldn't tell. Stephanie's button is broken. I know. Like, she's punching is it working? It. She's punching oh, it. She's hitting it so hard. She's breaking it. Okay, here we go. Hands. Sorry, you I'll just need better. to gently, honey. Just gently. Okay, okay oh here God. we go. <laughs> Leo, roll the next song. <laughs> Leslie. Cindy Lauper. No. It's. Leave this studio. 
Tiffany. Madonna. Okay. I can uh, calm down a little now because I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Be a good winner. Eric no, Schwab's face I'm very was like. Okay. <laughs> Leo, roll the next song. <laughs> oh, Stephanie. Pat Benatar loves the battlefield. Yes! <laughs> Broken. Again, again. You're gonna break. This was $1,800. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Leo. Let's oh prepare God. for the next one. I wonder if they're gonna get this next one. Here we go. Roll it. Yes. Shaka Khan. No, no, no. Um. It is Shaka Khan. Yes. I will take that. Yes. Oh, I thought I had to have both. Things. You can have one or the either. Okay. Believe me, I with feel you for two. You. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Leslie, where have you been? Come on, girl. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm hosting the damn thing. I'm... This is what it's like with the three of us at a bar. <laughs> this is, is what, is what it? it is with the three of us on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Not at 1030. Leo, morning. roll it. <laughs> You'll know it soon. It she worked hard for the money. Oh, hard for the money. <laughs> <laughs> that is the name of the song. It's Donna Summer, everyone. It's Donna Summer. Oh, so okay. hard for the money. Okay, this is the last one. Okay, oh this gosh. is the last one. Uh, Leslie, there's no way you I can know. win, but it's fine. <laughs> We're going to act like there's a way you can win. Someone leave the cake out in the rain. That was Donna Summer, too, right? MacArthur Park? I'm, I've completely lost control okay. of the show. Right. Okay, this is, this is the last one. Leo, roll it. <laughs> Right. Oh. No, she's in our oh, no. open every okay, single now day. I know. She's in our open every single day. She performs oh right here. Oh! Debbie gets it! Yeah! Okay. You're not pickled. Okay. Excuse me just a second. Excuse me just a second. Are you leaving the show? We're never having these two together. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Well, this is exciting. We mentioned the State Fair at the beginning of the show. Don't forget, we have some brand new items in the online swag store. They include special edition State Fair t-shirts and bags with our fair spin uh, on our logo. I love it. Uh, our buddy Kimberly and Creative did such a good job with these. We also have new shirts with my end of the show saying about going out there and being yourself, plus baby onesies and our very own Hotcha Spoon. Check out the swag store today. Links to the store available on our social media pages or just uh, shoot the QR code right now and I'm just going to show you this right now we have uh, Jason show sunglasses that we'll be giving away Ooh. yeah free these are free Fox ain't going to make you pay for these uh -huh. we'll be right back back in a moment everybody <laughs> free <laughs> we'll be right back Uh, before we go, I always like to point out, you know, people celebrate their birthdays here. They come for anniversaries. Where's Roberta? Roberta? Uh -oh. Is oh. Roberta not here? <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to point her out. <laughs> I'm going back to Hawaii, everyone. Well, if Roberta was here, she was supposed to be. She's turning 80. She's 80. Yeah, that's right. Roberta! Roberta I love you. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.